Very good, very good. I think we are now live on the Facebook. We are, and let's just see if it's going live here in the same group. Okay, it is starting and let's see. <clears throat> Starting, starting. Okay, it is in one of the groups. Let's see here. Photos and posts. All right, well, I know that we are live in the Magnetic Entrepreneur Inc. group. And let's see here. All right, well, it is going live here. It's in the Magnetic Entrepreneur Inc. group. And let me check here. One other thing, if it's the same one. Okay. All right, well, yes, we are live in here. I was trying to see about putting in this other group but all right well we will we will get the the ball rolling here okay all right great well great thank you so much for joining us today sammy uh, uh we have with us today sammy hassan who's the vp of magnetic entrepreneur uh inc and we're going to talk a little more about uh sammy's background his story what he does and uh, talk a little more about Magnetic Entrepreneur and Sammy's story. Sammy, so for those that don't know you, tell us, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, first, let me thank you very much for having me today. It's a pleasure and an honor, and I really appreciate that opportunity. So uh, my name is Sama Hassan. I am the only digital marketing consultant who is using the LEAD technique. L stands for uh, learning everything about your business so I can help you finding the right solutions online and E stands for excellent high quality leads delivered to your inbox every single hour. And A stands for accelerate your business growth using my own strategies. And D stands for doubling your revenues without increasing your marketing budget. So um, I have been in the industry since 2010 and uh, it all started by a very uh, humble question. Is it possible like to work on the computer and while you are sleeping, you start earning money. So with that simple question, I start a research that took me for um, days and months and years. And um, uh, it helped me a lot to figure out things by time uh, while I was researching the world of digital marketing and this amazing uh, world that it never ends and nobody could have uh, mastered everything in, 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 in one day or even in one year because it's very challenging and keep changing a lot. So I, I fall in love with that passion and with my, my passion for reading as well. Um, it started accumulating a wealth of knowledge and um, by trial and error in the beginning and then by following the masters or the mentors, if we, we can say that in, in this industry, it helped me a lot to um, to have a knowledge about uh, this wonderful uh, industry. And um, I became very passionate about it because with that knowledge, I can help more people as well. I love it, I love it. Uh, one question that comes to mind right now, you mentioned the masters or the mentors within this field. And I love that you said that, you know, you're able to help more people really by learning more on this and to implement. In terms of the masters and mentors, who have been most instrumental for you in really teaching you or that took things to the next level? Well, in the beginning, actually, before even discovering the world of digital marketing, uh, it was uh, Jim Rowan. So by a chance, I came to know Jim Rowan. And for those who, uh, who don't uh, know uh, Jim Rowan, um, they need to go and Google the name or go for the YouTube and put his name and once you start listening uh, to one of his um, um, uh, sessions uh, or one of his audiobooks, you will never be able to stop again. And one of the books that I, uh, I have his books here and one of the most important books in my life that I have read and I, it was the Leading and Inspired Life, it's this book. So um, learning um, 
from a master like him about the uh, the the importance of uh, uh, self developing and how you can um, uh, come back and understand a lot of the principles that by default you uh, embraced without even understanding uh, if these principles are right or wrong, but uh, just perhaps by observing people around you, you would just uh, embrace those principles. And sometimes those principles will cost you a lot, especially when it comes to time and money and uh, and all those things that uh, we, we don't literally learn them, let's say at school or university. So that was the beginning. And um, after that, I have started flying actually to, to his events. So I was honored to attend one of his events live it was in Germany, actually, at that, that time uh, before he passed away, um, several years after that event. And um, I've never realized that by just making that decision to book a ticket, uh, fly to see Jim Rohn life, that this event is going to become um, a very important um, incident or event in my life. It started a series of... Um, um, let's say things or, or decisions that I start making based on that event that definitely changed my life. Uh, one of the things that I have learned also that um, from, from all the readings from Brian Tracy, uh, from Jack Canfield, from Raymond Aaron, that I've learned that I need also, if I needed to go for one industry, I needed to understand it very much in depth, not only the, the surface of it, which means that I would need to go and study uh, everything. Based on that, I had to go back again to the university and I did my master's certificate in digital marketing that was in the University of San Francisco. So that takes some time as well, because in the beginning I was like, okay, whenever I find an ad uh, on back on those days about a course or a guru uh, or someone who's using some of the tricks online to generate money, I was immediately in. Like I go there and I buy the course. And I remember the first course I bought, actually, it was um, basically a kind of uh, um, ebook. Um, it will help you to pre-sell people. So I was amazed about that. Ha if you use the right language, even without having, uh, at, the, at those days, the early days of the internet, there was like no videos. So if you just learn how to persuade people by saying the things at the right way, the right time, you will be able to make them take an action for their favor and for your favor. So everybody is winning. And um, I was looking for a model, let's say, who already started this years and he made $1 million. And that person at that time was exist. He was so young and he was the first millionaire uh, by internet marketing online. And um, he was just selling an information product. It was simply a report about how you can buy cars and you can buy them at a huge discount. So it would tell you exactly what to say to the seller and when to go and buy and all those details. A few years after that, I learned that there is a different models and different people are, are trying to, uh, to sell to us online about um, making money, let's say online, because that's the catch, the big phrase that they catch everybody with it. Like, hey, it's just like a symbol button. This is a wonderful software. If you just take it, buy it and, and do whatever I'm telling you, then you will start making money. In those early days, some of those were really working well, but Google and all the technologies online start catching people who are trying to make a shortcut. So some people they used to build like websites specialized in niches or niches so they can uh, receive a huge amount of traffic and they capitalize with the Google display. Uh, some people they were trying to make an arbitrage by, um, by getting traffic to their website or one page and they will uh, sell a kind of, let's say, um, leads to other big companies or banks. So all of those models, I have invested a lot of time and money on them. And then I discovered at that time that, hey, this is part of the puzzle, but I'm not looking at the big picture. I need to go and really find the strategy about the whole thing. That would push me back to the university. And when I went to the university, I started understanding that it's much bigger and huge than that. So I shouldn't, like, let's say, um, uh, hooked 
with a new tool that it was created online without understanding why I need this tool and how I can categorize this tool first. Because the tools are amazing and great, but once you start like focusing on one tool and you forget everything else, so you are not getting the big picture. If the tool is just a tool, it would help you for, for something even bigger. So for example, when we go to the Facebook, how we can classify the Facebook uh, as a tool that would help you uh, in, in building your business? Well, Facebook is simply a, a social tool that will help you to tell more people about what you are doing. Nothing more, nothing less. So if you start thinking it from that perspective, you would see things in, in a different way and you wouldn't be overwhelmed because most of the people now in, whether that they are um, businesses or business owners, I mean, uh, they, or they are in the field, they are just overwhelmed and what they hear and they believe, they just go for it. But they don't see, I know some businesses when, when I start working with them, they only have a Facebook page. And they are not understanding how risky is only when you have a just Facebook page. Yeah, you can make some money there, but what if tomorrow something won't happen and this page is gone? Literally lose everything. You will start from the beginning. What if you start using, uh, let's say, a black hat um, uh, search engine optimization uh, uh, techniques and after a few years it was discovered by Google? Guess what? You will be out from the search in, uh, engine forever. Literally, you lose everything in one night. So so those kind of things that you could get away with them for a few months, sometimes for few years, they will come back to hunt you. So it is really important to understand what you are doing there. You are really important also to understand when you hire someone uh, to really research his background very well, because some people are there, they will get you in the beginning some traffic. I know a, a client of mine, he, he, he was like uh, um, uh, sold the idea that uh, he would go for with this company and they are going to bring him to Facebook, uh, to search engine, uh, Google search engine uh, in Mississauga for a specific terms. So I know how they're gonna do it in the beginning so they can get his money, but after that they will drop the ball, which exactly what happened. So after a few months, let's say maybe less than a year, he came back and say, hey, by the way, that thing that you used to do is not working anymore. So I said, yeah, because I know how did they generate it from the beginning. Recently, even I was approached by uh, a, um, um, a director who was going to do a movie about the uh, fake trends in Twitter. Because in some countries, literally, you can create fake trends and people will just like go with them and start asking, what about this thing? What about that thing? Who is that person who everybody is talking about him in, in, in Twitter because it's a trend? So that's a huge uh, impact. So yeah, it is possible also to, to do that. I, I remember one time before, several years ago, one, uh, one big media company, um, they were uh, approaching me and discussing with me that if I can increase the number of their likes on the Facebook page, I said, okay, fine. How much do you have now and how much do you want to get later but i start explaining to them how organically we are going to do this and how generally we are going to do it and they said don't you sell like everybody else i said what do you mean sell, sell likes i said sell likes and then what after i increase the number from 50 to 100k what would happen he said well you we just achieved the target and i said really but by that time you already diluted all your numbers you know it is fake, so it's not genuine. All your engagement uh, indicators will go down and they will suffer. It's not about the number. It's about the value of this number and how did you create it. Uh, so it is really important to understand you're not trying to manipulate others in a way so they can come to you, but you need to work smart. I'm not saying even hard, but smart to make sure that you are building the right empire online or you just simply get a number and then after that you will figure out that, oh, it doesn't mean anything at the end. I really appreciate where you're coming from and the fundamentals of what you're speaking about <clears throat> so much. And I really appreciate you sharing that. One thing that comes to mind, the most fundamental book on marketing, which pervades all of this, was from somebody that helped to actually create parts of the internet. Seth Godin, This is Marketing. I really think that is probably 
that is the fundamental look at marketing, which takes away all of the tricks and all that. It's fundamentally what is happening. What do you think about this as marketing and how that relates to what you're, what you're sharing here? Well, since you mentioned Seth Godin, he's one of, of course, my favorites. I love all of his work and I wish one day we, we meet and I express personally about that to him. Um, I was fascinated by all of his uh, books and writings and, and blogs. And I would never, for, for example, forget about his, his way of, um, let's say, summarize the whole branding uh, uh, in, 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 in the book of uh, The Purple Cow. So people will be attracted to, to brands that they are totally different and genuine at the same time. And if, if we go to, to, to the example that you mentioned, a, the, what happened here is just like we are in a new medium, which is the internet, and we are using all of those wonderful technologies to communicate. With that happening in mind, that means that there are some limitations, some rules that we need to follow to deliver the same impact. All days, people will, will, will pick the phone and try to sell something over the phone and the other people on the other end, they would happily accept the call and try to understand what they are trying to sell and maybe it's something good for them. Some people, uh, they would just put an advertisement on the newspaper and, and go from there. But now everything has changed and because of that, we are exposed to a huge amount of information and advertisement every single day, like hundreds of them. And what comes with that, that we would need to take a decision. So some people are just like mute, the trying to ignore all the ads that they are seeing as much as possible, which is impossible mission every day because they will get you, whether you like it or not. It comes in an email, it comes while you are driving, it comes while you are listening to the radio. It comes while you are socializing on the Facebook. It comes when you when you just surfing the internet. So it is always there. It comes when you watch now the YouTube. If you just like try to skip from the TV, then when you go now on the YouTube, then you will have to receive the ads. If you don't want the ads, then you need to subscribe on, on the premium. So it's everywhere. And sometimes, by the way, it is really, really good because I do remember uh like i got into a good business and i discovered a wonderful product because simply i follow an ad so it's not bad all the time however we need to re to always remember the basics that we are all human and we are trying to uh, communicate and the, the 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 marketing especially it's an art of um let's say warming up the market pre-selling people and uh, as as a marketer my job is simply tip the scale of your decision without you know that I am doing that. It is a very important concept. So you would think sometimes that you are taking the decision by yourself, but actually I am the one who just giving you the tips that would make you take the decision. So it is important that when you hire the right digital marketer also to understand that what is his background and he's going like to influence people for, for something good for them or no, it's bad for them and just about selling. So it is very, very important because I have seen people that just like manipulating people with, with their techniques of neuro linguistic programming or telling them things that would seem to be the right thing that they won't need, but after that they buy, they would discover that, oh, it's not the same thing that we taught, but the guy did not 100% lie, but he didn't tell the truth accurately as well. So for that, uh, it is important. And basically one of the most important books also in that is, is this book, Influence. <clears throat> so Influence uh, for Robert Cialdini is, uh, it's a very well-known uh, book in, in the world um, uh, for, for persuasion. And he got also an, a new book uh, that was recently uh, published. Um, I highly recommend for anyone who, who wants really to understand how we can influence people and influence others for their own favor, that he, he definitely need to go and read that book. It is so important. Yeah. Tell us, in terms of for influence, so we have, <clears throat> what I'm hearing here is a lot of the focus on the digital uh, resources that we now have with technology to communicate with more people. But underlying this fundamentally is being able to communicate in a way to influence 
to make something happen, right? And then to, you mentioned as well, being able to make money as you sleep. So creating some type of system. Uh, can you share with us some insight into the fundamentals of that influence? What is it, regardless of the platform or the tools, what is it that really creates influence fundamentally for business owners or people that are trying to communicate or monetize an idea? Sure. So let's break that to two different examples. One example is most of the people will relate. Uh, it's just building a, an online e-commerce uh, website that sells uh, a product uh, uh, and then uh, uh, make sure that this website is become visible and it looks uh, trustworthy for people who would decide that they're going to buy. So this is one of the examples. So a few years back, one of my best friends, he called me and he said that I have this business idea and have this wonderful products and it was jewelry. And um, I, I wanna, it's a personalized jewelry thing. And he said, I wanna sell it online. Can you help me with that? And the journey started. So that kind of idea, it is nice. What is really important to understand who's your competitors first online, because Basically, you, you, you're not necessarily bringing a, a new idea, let's say. But if you are uh, bringing, a, um, let's say, a, a successful idea, but you want to introduce it with a twist or a higher quality or a cheaper price, etc., then yes, it is possible, of course. The, the good thing about that, once you make everything set up right and you find out... So I have like a framework when I, when I work with, with, a, with a business. I keep asking first few questions and then I go online and I, I find out who are the top five really good competitors for the for the search terms, the core search terms, if I if I can say. So I can go after those top five and see which one is the weakest online. Uh, weakest means that I can replace his ranking in a short time. Because in some industries, it's almost impossible because they have started very um, uh, um, early. They build a lot of good, solid um, ranking for them online. So it would be almost impossible to go and knock them out on the core keywords or the core, uh, let's say, search terms that people are using to find them as a solution. But not necessarily that you could find a place that you could replace one of those competitors or pages and you could bring your website there. So this is number one, that if you want to build something that work while you are sleeping and you make money, that could be um, that you could sell physical products. And these days there are a lot of stuff. Like most of the time I've seen people getting uh, excited so much when they learn about the drop shipping and they believe it's very simple. Uh, uh, thanks for the, uh, the marketers were trying to sell it like this way, just to sell their course. But the idea, it's much more complicated than that. Because the, the first thing that you will find out that, oh, I need to learn all this technology. And after that, I need to spend money as well on the advertisement just for testing to find one product that will work. And then you take it from there to the next and the third. Same for Amazon as well. But it's valid, of course. The, the second thing is that you could literally build... Um, a business around uh, that sells online as well around uh, consulting, uh, around your knowledge, um, around around anything. Anything is possible to be packaged and be sold online while you are sleeping. So if if you want to sell um, a knowledge about something that you let's say how you do podcasts and how you create them in this perfect way and how you can do them without uh, losing much money in just trial and error. Uh, or saving time. So you could find one of those um, benefits and highlight it very well. And that would be the thing. And you could also influence me to, to go with, with that direction as a business and, and buy your course and learn from it because it would create for me a wealth at the end because I could take it and make it on my own industry and apply it and I become an authority on it. Uh, just by having my own platform, talking to many people, and I become an authority. Even if just like interview the people in your industry and you thought that they are competition to you, they would be because now you are interviewing all of those people and learn from them 
uh, without um, uh, any uh, fees that you would go and, and, and pay to them so they can tell you all the information. Actually, they are sitting on your own platform, your own show, and you're asking the questions and simply they are telling you the wisdom without charging you. So that's huge. You could take all of that after that, after some time, and you put it on a membership website. And now people who want to attend those interviews, they need to pay a membership fees so they can go and access that. One of the great examples that was done this early days, it was um, um, a very famous guy, uh, Andrew, uh, from Mixergy. So when he started that, it was, very, it was a very simple website. And just like maybe I think when I start joining that website, it was like maybe less than 30 uh, uh, interviews early days. And uh, it was amazing after that because the wealth of knowledge from those interviews, from people who literally started businesses from scratch and failed and tried till they make it and become famous. So that place will become a, a great place. And his, his strategy is very simple. When he record an interview, he just make it for free for some time. So it's free. And then after that, he move it inside the gate. So you need to pay the membership. So it became now something like Linda, let's say lynda.com but in a different different flavor, which, uh, which is a great thing because you wouldn't go to, you wouldn't find any place like the, that place, especially to learn from real life cases, like people literally did it and you have a proof that they have done it. So you can learn directly from them. Uh, so that's another idea of, of making, uh, as well as a, a kind of business that you don't need to, uh, sit from nine to five or work 80 hours to, to generate money. It works by itself. So it, it makes me a pleasure when I remember when after I started uh, uh, that project with my friend that whenever I am in, in a meeting or uh, in a commuting, uh, I check my emails and I found, oh, we make like few sales in the last uh, five hours. This is amazing. I was consulting and I'm earning money or I am helping some friends for free even and at the same time, I'm receiving orders from the other hand. So that makes it wonderful because today, let's face it, we would require to replace the one stream of income with different streams of incomes. That will make it less stress sometimes. That will make it um, easy for us to persuade, uh, to pursue, I mean, um, uh, things uh, or goals that we want to, to achieve. Uh, I remember uh, one of, some of my friends, they were very fascinated about uh, traveling. And I said that, by the way, I have a great idea that you, if, you, if you learn it, maybe you would travel for free because you, you need to keep thinking about how you can change the, the, the question. Like, how can I do this for free? Is it possible with internet? Literally everything is possible because if you know a place, let's say you are in, in Texas, and you know your city very well. And I am looking to visit Texas, but I have no clue how can I enjoy my, my time uh, uh, with a specific budget, with a limited budget. So if you just develop um, a small tour guided program that would give me that taste of Texas in a in few days on a limited budget, you would have literally created a product. I will hire you. And when I'm there, I know that I'm not gonna waste my time, waste my money, uh, not missing out most important things and I come after uh, this tour or, or for, for one day or more with a wealth of knowledge about the city and it looks like I have living there for a month or, or a year. So those kind of, of ideas even under under $100 it could still be developed till today and people can can just create them and use them and take them at a, at a step to the bigger thing. So each one take you to the second one. Love it. So <clears throat> tell us, Sammy, in your in your journey, what what was maybe one or two failures that you had to learn from? What can you share with us that you learned from and you failed? Oh one of the things that I do remember very well when I when I recall the um my, my saying about the tools. It was a tool that 
at that time it was very successful tool. Like this is the Ferrari of the tools, right? And the company who sells the tool, they don't charge you per month. So we need to sign an agreement for one year. And uh, I, I run out the numbers and I say, okay, I only need like three clients and they need to pay me this amount and I would cover the cost. And after that, I would start making money. So I went and I signed the agreement and uh, I didn't read all the terms and the conditions, but I just signed it and I said, okay, fine, how we can do the payment. They said, okay, we'll split it into two payments. Every six months you pay. I said, okay, perfect. I already at that time, I had a client, one large client. And I was speaking with another client. And at the end of the day, both of the clients joined. But what happened after a few uh, uh, weeks, um, things changed in the projects and they were not using the tool. And I, I got distracted with other things as well. And I said, okay, the worst thing that would happen that I'm not going to renew for the coming six months. And at least I will get out without any, any loss. Like, okay, I didn't make any money because I simply took the down payment from those companies, pass it to the, the company who owned the tool because I was really convinced that this tool is great. And what happened is that the, when they went to, to cancel the contract, they said, no, the agreement is valid for 12 months and you simply need to pay $11,000 for the next six months. And I said, but I'm not using the tool. I said, it doesn't matter. If you read your agreement, you will find that you, we, we don't care. <laughs> simply, we don't care. We just sold you a tool. If you're not using it, it's your problem, not ours. So I learned a lot, a big lesson from that, especially that the companies did not continue also using the, the, the software or the tool. And I had to pay the money from my own pocket. So that was a very expensive lesson, 11,000 US dollars, just to learn a simple lesson that you, you shouldn't be too optimistic sometimes. Uh, you should be also strict with your clients if, if they're gonna start uh, using a software that you 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 have your own agreement with the um, the corporate that sold you the the software, uh, then you also need to apply the same on the other side uh, without having any trouble. So that was one one hard lesson. I needed to work for I think two to three months to just save that money and uh, and, and and pay the whole thing. And uh, I learned the lesson very well after that. That when I go for a software or a tool that it looks pretty and nice and everything, I would need to get a monthly agreement. Like, okay, I'm using this month, then I'm paying for it. If I'm not using or my client is not using it or don't need it anymore, then there is no, no agreement that we need to pay for the upcoming months, which is fair. And most of the companies actually these days doing that. I was so surprised that this company is taking such kind of an aggressive, let's say marketing way for selling people. and. After a year, I was following this company because I wanted to know it was a, this company will survive like this. And then it turned to be not because of those wrong ways of doing the business. They start declining and declining. Uh, so they were like went into restructure, fired a lot of people. They're trying to downsize because the way that they are doing the business is not right. It ended up like a lot of people like me went into uh, the collection for, uh, departments following them because they are in trouble. So it's, it's, it, it turned to be a, it's a bigger problem. It's not only about only my mistake, but at the end, it was my mistake also when I, when I agree on that agreement. Okay. But I, I learned my lesson. The other thing is uh, early days, it was the, um, the belief of the shortcuts. Like, yes, I can make money using this shortcut if I just go and, and buy this course or if I go and sign up to get an access to the software. The shortcuts, it seems to be very convenient. That's why um, the people who created them, um, they, they, they know that they wouldn't last for long, but they, they play on that trick in the minds of us to try to, pers to, pers to convince us that this thing will literally work. It's just a click of button. If you sign on this and if you pay this, you would next day you start making money. It doesn't work like that. 
I wish it was very simple. Like, hey, you sign up for a, yeah, for you, you write just a Facebook advertisement, and then all the people that you're targeting them, they will come to your page, they will sign up, they will give you their their credit card, and you will be happy uh, in in a week or in a month. No, it doesn't work like that. Even in the early days, I mean, there was, um, let's say, a learning curve, and that learning curve it started to be harder and harder by time. So I remember the first time, even the concept, I wasn't like, oh, wow, really? I can be in somewhere else. And uh, I, I signed up for an affiliate program selling uh, information products uh, for people who created them on ClickBank. So ClickBank, for people who never heard that before, it's like a marketplace like Amazon, but for products, people create informational products. They put it there. They give you the access to the... Uh, uh, let's say the banners and all the uh, tools and the collateral that you would need to use to hopefully uh, bring a traffic to uh, their website. And then if there is a, a buyer, there is a conversion at the end, they would give you a share. That share, it could be 50%, 60%, 70%. It start going up all the time. And the reason why, because it cost you traffic. So early days, it was it was good when I was doing that. Because the traffic, it co the ad cost, let's say, it was affordable. But after a few years, it become very expensive. So you could spend like $100 and make a couple of sales for a product that wouldn't generate in commission the same amount of money. So it wasn't, it wasn't a good deal anymore. Unless you have a, um, a website that was designed and ranked already on, on, on a hobby, uh, that people organically can find it online when they search about, uh, let's say, uh, RC games. So they can come to the website uh, and then you can sell them um, a guide how they can uh, fly a drone uh, without making any crashes from the first day. So that become uh, hard. However, the business never stopped because a lot of people still using other techniques to, um, to generate that traffic, but it did not become that much profitable. But I met people who started very early and they become expertise on, on that. And um, they, they literally, they, they make a will based on, on just affiliate products that they do promote for other people. Very interesting. <clears throat> so from here, what would you say as well would come to mind if you were to think of a very big success that you had something that you implemented or something you learned in this process that really was a very big win and you were really excited about having learned that or implemented that. Does something come to mind for you? Yeah, uh, many things. I would pick something simple. So let's say the the e-commerce website. So in the beginning, we used to have only uh, Google ads. So you're we spending money on Google ads and making sales and earning the profits at the end after deducting the cost. But by that, by, by time, the, the cost of the ad with a decline in the currency in that market caused a huge gap. So the, the ad becomes super expensive, like you wouldn't be able to afford it. Like if you only want to afford it, you literally need to make one sale with each click, which doesn't happen at any business. So we had it to shift to, I had it to find a solution that would become affordable and easy, and it wouldn't take that much time to, to, to make it happen. So I shift the whole thing to another marketplace, and I start learning everything about the marketplace. It was Etsy. So I start learning how can I, rank, I can rank a website or a product on Etsy. And I got all the material that is possible, and I start experimenting. And in one year, the traffic was doubled and the second year was tripled and the fourth year was quadrupled. So the last time I was checking the traffic, I was checking the sales from, from that shop only, it was 65,000 US dollars. So, so that thing is start, and I don't pay any ads. It's just like simply, I understood how I can rank this. I used a, a simple, let's say two tools to figure out that and to pick the right keywords, to pick the right categories and make sure that all each product is really optimized to Etsy uh, guide. And I audited my whole store 
And after that, I start watching the traffic comes and comes and comes and growing. And of course, with a good product, you would receive a wonderful review. And that's what makes things easier after that. Phenomenal. Well, let's, let's talk Magnetic Entrepreneur. So this was phenomenal. I really enjoyed and I find a lot of value talking about sort of this digital background. And I think there's an incredible amount of value in what you just shared. So Magnetic Entrepreneur is something very big and impactful for entrepreneurs all over the world. In this, play, in, in this case now with your involvement there, how did you initially sort of get involved with Magnetic Entrepreneur and maybe start for people that in the future, I guess maybe they haven't heard too much. Tell us more about Magnetic Entrepreneur and, and your involvement with Magnetic Entrepreneur. Yeah, when when it started, all started when I met uh, with Robert, and uh, in the beginning, we I I wasn't sure how far we could go with the with the idea, so it was very simple that um, at that time uh, it's just like about okay helping people how we can help people we help people by by branding them and we could use the uh, the uh, the book as a way of upbranding people. Because most of the people they don't understand how how this is a so far is a super powerful tool. Most of them they were like they they just like okay I I will I will put a chapter and you will publish a book, and then after that we will sell a book and make money. I said no, it doesn't work like that. It's much bigger than this, and I start explaining to them. So in one of the uh, the recent trips, um, I used the the book to influence others to to make something for me and i was surprised every time i keep using that not every time it would work it depends on the person as well but let's say out eight out of ten it works it works you get a special uh treatment um a different uh value uh because you just use the book to um uh, to influence the others how they would perceive you so i was i was in the uk with my son and i walk uh to uh to the lounge and i wanted to to stay there for some time and after that i need to rent a room in the in the lounge to to sleep over because it was a long uh, time for waiting and we were super tired so i went there and i checked about the rules of the lounge it says that well you would pay this amount only for three hours and after that we start charging you so I introduced myself to the, the lady who, who was uh, the manager at that time there, and I showed her the book and my name, and I said, um, I want to get an access to the lounge, and also later I would need to get a room. Can you help me with that? So she said, sure. Well, first, let me take care of your son so he would enter for free. So that's the first thing. And second, instead of like, I would charge you after the first three hours, no, I will only charge you for three hours. So I saved a lot of money for the uh, other hours after the three hours. She gave me a nice place to, to, to wait till the time comes for checking into the room. And she allowed me even to get in my, my hotel room uh, earlier, uh, one hour earlier. So that's a very special thing. I remember also when I was just passing in the um, uh, check-in for the customs or the, you know, it was the customs or the passport thing. So the, uh, I remember this, it was only for first class and business class. And there was like a long line on the other side. And I said, okay, I will go there and see what would happen. And I hold the book and say, um, she, and she, 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 sir, where's your, your, your passes? So I, I show her, she says, oh, this is like economy passes. I said, yeah, but I look like a businessman. And she laughed. I show her the book and introduce myself. And she even wrote down the book and my name. And she said, I promised to buy the book. It was a pleasure to meet you today. And I was like, wow, this is really works. So it also works with, with the customers because it will immediately differentiate you. It will tell people that you know your thing. It's just that. It will ensure them that they are in a safe hand if they decide to, to go with you, that they are going to be happy, comfortable. Even in the worst case scenarios, if you screw up sometimes, you will not let them go without coming back and making it up for them. Because not every time I would be able to 100% make the, the customer happy. Uh, sometimes it's out of my hand. 
unexpected delays, things goes wrong, but they are sure that if they pay money, that I would guarantee that they will never ever go uh, without feeling uh, that they didn't get the value and that I'm 100% satisfied about what I delivered to them. So I work with Robert on that concept and then we start expanding it a little bit. So we wanted to help people by differentiating them in their uh, own um, uh, industries. And then we said, okay, what about that we take this further and we have a, a the magazine and what we could do with the magazine and how we can reach more people to tell them about that story about magnetic entrepreneur. So it would all goes to one important thing that it's all about you. And I remember very uh, important um, sentence that I've learned before uh, from Jim Rohn. For things to change, you have to change. So it means that if you want everything in your life to change, then your way of thinking needs to change. You shouldn't be limited to the old things that you believe that this is the right thing. No, you need to be very open and sometimes even go and revisit the things that the principles that you believe that they are the right thing and try to, to review it once a year and figure out if this is uh, something that is really 100% right or not. And the answer is very simple. How many times I needed to use that principle and how many times it was the right thing at the end, like the result, I like it, so I can repeat the same thing. Because if the result was wrong, it means that the principle was wrong, so you don't need to use it. You need to just refresh it and replace it with something else. And the, um, the other thing is, uh, it was actually from Brian Tracy, uh, knowledge is power. So if you believe that you learn everything, that's the first step for failure, because guess what? A few seconds ago, something happened and you're not aware about it yet. So you need to go and know your thing and keep sharpening the soul uh, according to the seven habits rule. And it means that if you are training your body every day to stay in shape, you need also to train your brain and the way of thinking to stay in shape. So I keep telling people, don't think about that the book is the way that you will go and publish it and make money of it. But it's the, the book in, in one, of, one of my books, my earlier books, that I, it helped me literally to upgrade a contract from $35,000 to $50,000 and eliminate all the competition in just one meeting. So it is so powerful because it saves a lot of time and money and hassle uh, between you and the, uh, the prospect or the, the, the person that you are trying to influence to, to win the business from. We wanted to help people by showing them, not only telling them that, hey, you just write a book here and write a chapter there and things will go fine. One of my recent clients, he came to me, he wanted to do a second book. And I said to him, but why do you want that? Because you already have, you have, uh, you co-authored a book with, uh, with Liz Brown at that time. He said, no, I want to have my own book. I said, okay, but that would cost you more. He said, yes, I know. And how much? And I, I give him the price. And he was like, oh, but I don't have that money now. I said, yeah, but you don't need to have all the money. I said, what do you mean? Like I do installments? I said, no, you go find four or five sponsored companies corporates, businesses in, in different cities in, in, in the country. And you already, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a coach, um, sport coach. And you tell them about what you're going to deliver in the book and ask each one of them to pay you a certain amount of money and then promise that you will mention them in the book and you will refer people who who gonna buy the book or read the book to you. And maybe if you want, even you can go and teach one class for free there. So he said, this is a brilliant idea. I'm super excited. Now I don't need to worry about the money. I said, yes, it's the, your decision first comes. So if you decided to do something, you don't think about, oh, but I don't have the money. No, do that thing, take a decision to do it. And then things will reveal itself. It is very important concept. Like in many, it's, it's, it's like a jumbo of uh, like, um, it's hard in the beginning to understand it, and it requires a lot of courage, a lot of courage, I have to say. But once you start doing it, you will find the dots coming closer to each, each step that you are trying to make. And it become, as I call it, magical. 
but one of my mentors told me it's like it's magic he called it at the, at the end magical but he he tried to explain it in the in the way of physics and uh i said okay it's nice explanation but i insist it's magical because it happens all the time it happens all the time so um with this way we we want to we want to make people lives easier because most of us think that i need to work all the time day and night to make a living think about it how many people trying to do that and how many of them they make it some of them of course they make it but is this is the thing that you want to do all the time of course not you don't want to suffer it's like i can relate to this like if you want to go to the gym and build the six apps or six packs and you try to find a formula by just trying and failing and you work maybe for a year or two and then you discover you are not getting any result you'll be frustrated but it would be very stupid that you if you keep trying more if you want to save the time and energy and the money and you get the instant result you would find a person who has the six apps and say hey can you help me i would buy all the supplements that you you are taking I will follow the same rules that you are doing to to get this result at the end. So if you sleep like eight hours from 10 o'clock, I will do the same. If you drink plenty of water, I will do the same. I will do this and do that because I can see a guaranteed result at the end. So it is important to understand if you want to make a huge success in something, then you need to find a person that already made it and either that buy his books follow him, call him, reach out to him, even if you don't have the money. I have met people when I ask them uh, about how did they made it. So, well, simply we went and asked the successful people. We just bought them a lunch. And after that, we became friends and they started helping us. And after that, we wanted to learn more. So we start paying them. But in the beginning, it was just a free consulting, a free outing, a free, a free, a, it, 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 it was free. People are really humble. Not all of the successful people are arrogant, but most of, most of them, at least the people that I met personally, they were really nice people. When I went to them and asked them about um, a question, how, what do you recommend? What kind of books do you read? So they would come and say, hey, if you wanna, if you wanna learn something about how to write an advertisement, you read this book. If you wanna learn something about that, you need to follow that. So uh, life is not, it doesn't need to be so hard, let's say. But the law of attraction works. This is what I can tell. And the more that you focus on, on helping others in a certain way, genuinely, not for any other reason, things get revealed like crazy. Like you literally, you could reach to a certain level that you can think about people. And that thought, because you are vibrating very high positive energy, it reached to them in other countries and they respond. So sometimes they respond in the same second, Sometimes they respond in after a minute, in a day, maximum two days. So, but it really works. You know, I think this conversation gave me an insight that I think ties some of this together, which is uh, interesting. So, so in here, what I'm hearing from you is quite a lot of fundamental focus. And I think it's, it's again, so valuable. And so, so here, what I'm thinking too, is that with a lot of the recommendation to approach things in this way, there are a lot of people that may give pushback and they may say, no, that doesn't work. And as I think about that, I'm almost thinking that th those people are not coachable. And in business, one thing I've learned is that the teams that are most successful are with teams of people that are very coachable and very open. And so in this case, if you're not coachable and you're not ready to receive the information, you've got all of these people and all this information that people want to pour in if you're coachable. And I, there, there's something there about fundamentally looking at some of these uh, aspects. And I think that there's something there and there's something about that coachable aspect that I think is related here. Very true. If we take the examples of the most successful, let's say, uh, uh, soccer uh, players now, so you would find uh, Musala now one of the best people uh, or best players in the world. There is a reason for that because he's coachable. I mean, 
he got a dream since he was very young to become very famous in this game. But he didn't think about, okay, I will create my own plan and I want to be like uh, Billy. No, he started learning the basic things, but also he followed the role models. And as a result, he reached to his level and he became so famous while he was so young. So in each industry, if you think about who is really successful and who do you want to be like in 10 years, in 20 years, and if you find that person or those persons, as a list, you start, okay, I'm getting, I need to get closer to them to understand how they live, how they uh, take decisions, how they allocate their time, how they treat people. Because if you want it to be like that, you need to see the result first. So I remember when old days, when I go to the first early jobs in my life, I go there and I say, okay, who's the head of the department? And then I start monitoring that person. And I see, okay, well, how he work now? Does it seem very interesting to me or not? And I make a decision and instantly. And people say, are you crazy? People like to have this job. I said, yeah, but my aim is not getting a job. I want to see if I progress there in this job, after how many years I will be the head of the place. And if that is really something that I would love to continue after that, is it really fun? Is it really interesting? Or is just simply a job I will earn from it some money? Because in the beginning, most of the people, when they get hired for a job, the first thing that they are excited about most of the time is just the money. How much money I'm going to make at the end of the day or end of the month. But after a while, they figured out that, oh, I'm spending all that money and I need more. But what remains, the thing that I'm doing every day. But am I learning something new here? So... Am I growing? Because if you're not growing, then you are shrinking. And if you are not learning something new, then you need to get out as early as possible because it's a waste of time. You're not getting earn uh, more. And uh, you and the, simply the company will, in few years, will lose everything and lose the business and probably they will lay off people because they are not helping people to grow. And it's the knowledge now is the game. The companies that we see now recently, they would never exist 20 years ago, like Airbnb, uh, PayPal, um, uh, Tesla. So all those companies changed the world around us and they were never existing there. It's not like General Motors, so not like IBM. So all of those companies, just a new companies with a simple idea and they start challenging everybody um, uh, about the principles that we used to live with. And finally, we find those companies are beneficial. So. Uber, who from us did not take a ride with Uber? Like it become now the, the official ride, not the taxi, not the limo. Um, a, in, in some countries even, they, they, they have not, not necessarily cars, but um, um, uh, motorcycles to, to help people going from one place to another if it's a small um, uh, distance. So it is important all the time to, to think from that perspective and understand if I want to make a life only, or I want to have, because if you just want to make a life, that's, that's, that's good as well, but you don't need to have big dreams in that case. The, the challenge is that you want the big dreams, but you don't want to do the work to reach the big dreams. You don't want to change and you expect that money will come to you. No, you have first to change and it would take some time to learn it. And after that, you would find that you start attracting the opportunities. Your awareness keeps growing and you become more alert to how you would connect the dots between that person and this person. And then you will get a value for everyone, including you. So that's a very important concept. If you are not thinking from that perspective and you're only focusing on you, how much I'm gonna win then it would end up that you are going to lose at the end. Because, yeah, in the beginning, you will win bits and pieces, but the whole lump sum of the, the project, it will be a total loss. Because you're working from a scarcity mindset. And it's, yeah. I was watching a, I was watching a, a documentary on uh, Netflix yesterday called Creativity. 
Mm -hmm. It's a guy that has studied the scientific uh, aspect of creativity and what happens in the mind. And it's so interesting what you said about becoming more alert to connect the dots. They showed one guy who uh, that Bill Gates has actually said is the most intelligent person in the world. And this guy was talking about how he constantly is going around in different places to be stimulated with different concepts. Mm -hmm. And so by constantly doing that, he's getting new, new stimulus. And I, that concept that you just shared is super interesting about being able to more effectively look at things that seem like they're unrelated, but seeing how they're connected and then pulling them together. That's super interesting. Well, great. Well, sort of rounding this out with Magnetic Entrepreneur, the awards and awards event and galas is, is, is coming up. And this is a really interesting concept. It's an, a huge event, pulling together all these people. So talk to us a little more about the, the idea behind how this fits into the whole Magnetic Entrepreneur um, uh, enterprise and sort of what the expectations are and how this may grow and maybe some future things that you're seeing to sort of continue to help this to mushroom to be even more impactful for everybody. Sure. We are very excited for the upcoming event, especially that um, uh, we have received uh, people coming from different places in the world. So they are flying to Toronto to come to attend this event. We, uh, We have also a lot of surprises in this event when it comes to even the, the, the speakers, the knowledge that we are gonna share with, uh, with all people, uh, they, will be, they will be very super excited and totally happy about the value of the time and the money that they put there, uh, especially for the people who are actually taking uh, flights to come. So I'm telling everyone who's living close by, whether in the US or in, or in Canada, that they, they must consider to come to this event because I promise to them it's gonna change their life. I have seen people coming from Egypt, people coming from from Dubai, people coming from some places in Africa, and it's uh, it's really really amazing. the uh, The event itself it will be for two days. We uh, we are going to share. Um, uh, uh, we we are going to rece- we are going to deliver. Let's say the awards for the people who have uh, been nominated and uh, hopefully win an award. We are also going to have a wonderful network and going to reveal about an upcoming uh, masterclass um, uh, soon. Um, hopefully people will have the time and, and energy to come and attend uh, on those upcoming masterclasses because we find out that in sometimes in even the basic things like learning something about how to use the technology instead of being um, uh, overwhelmed uh, or afraid uh, using those kind of technologies. It's just like stopping you. Like I have clients that they are charging people $100,000 per year for, for consulting. And it comes like, oh, by the way, you would you could easily scale this up if you just use the, the Zoom or use the Facebook Live to get more people. And they're like, but I don't know how to use it. Like, yeah, that's the simple part. The most important part that you already done, your knowledge. But just using the technology, it's a very simple thing. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna walk them through how how they can use these technologies in in that masterclass as well and much more. So basically, we wanna we wanna also tell more people about stories from the people who already um, uh, wrote a chapter um, and uh, how just this way in, help them to make their life much easier. So a recent story uh, about this, just to tell people how how good is uh, and powerful is that with one of the co-authors uh, who, who who was in the Magnetic Entrepreneur books uh, uh, with me, I helped him uh, with, with using the book to just get $1 million for his company. So it's very simple if people just think about it in a different way, they will start vibrating uh, a lot of energy around that thought. Some people, they're still in shock. They couldn't believe even that they become international bestsellers because the the book become an international bestselling book. 
uh, after it was launched in February. And they couldn't believe it. Like I take a screenshot and I show it to them and it's like, no way. Why? It means that you, you don't have that kind of assurance that you really can make it. It looks in the beginning impossible but nothing is impossible. You're not supposed to, if, you, if, if we go back like 100 years back and I tell you, hey, Earl, you can fly. You say, are you nuts? This is impossible. I don't have wings, I'm not a bird. How can I fly? Now people fly in airplanes. If people believed before that they will hold a watch and they will talk on the watch for somebody else in the other, uh, in the other country, they will say, this is impossible. That's only on the, science fiction movies. Now people talk to the watch. These days I'm talking to devices. So I have in my place different devices. So in the morning I'm talking to Siri and talking to Google and they are fun. So I'm experimenting all the time with the technology and it really makes my life better. So when I'm, when I'm bored, I, I would just go having fun with it and see, okay, let's see if I say to Siri or Google, Actually, because Google now is getting smarter on that, faster than Siri. But um, so I'll go say, hey, Google, I'm feeling bored. And then I found that the Google Play comes and say, okay, here's three games. Which one would you like to try? And then I would pick the game and it starts explaining to me about the games and how I can participate. And suddenly I'm out of that thought about I'm feeling bored. And I'm now engaged in a fun game about me because all of the quizzes that they have there, it basically tells something about your personality to cheer you up at the end. So I found this amazing. If I am going to, um, to, to Toronto downtown and I was like, hey Google, how long does it take now from, from my place to, to downtown? And immediately it told you, oh, according to the traffic now, it will take you this amount. So if I am, uh, getting late, I would know early so I can hurry up and, and, and go uh, fast out from the place. All of those things are keep changing our life. And we need to understand that they might look complicated in the beginning, but they are fun to use. Once we learn those concepts, then they're going to change our life. I, I, I keep thinking about what would happen in 10 years, because now the acceleration of the technology is super fast. And when I go to school, I would check with my, with, with my son's teacher and she, he's programming robots. And I look, what? She said, yes, we bring robots to the class and he like robots and he start programming them. And I said, this is, this is unbelievable. Like if I think about my other son, maybe in few years by the time that he's getting into the school, maybe they will be able to control rockets. Who knows? It's really growing fast. And I remember our old days, basically when, when we finished the, the school or yeah, at the time of the high school, or even after, if you remember the Atari, the, and we have those cartridges and we start playing for hours with the joystick and it was fun. Basically the, if we go play them now, like what crap is that? Like the graphics is horrible. Nothing is really important. And we, we spend hours there. Now people do live games, they create their own games online, they do interaction, they do even virtual reality. So they put that gla glasses and they walk in the room and it's a different world. So things are changing fast, but we shouldn't feel panic or overwhelmed about using technology. We don't need to learn everything, but we need to keep learning because if we are not learning every day something new, we're gonna obsolete and, and be left behind so far. Yeah, absolutely. I'll <clears throat> I'll share this and uh, this related to this, and then we can we can sort of round it out. I can share from personal experience here with even just doing this recording that there were some there have been some some major learning lessons in the process, and in this case, I've probably been now working on doing this type of recording for about a year year and some change. But as you were sharing, I have to share about my Tony Robbins experience. So yeah. when I first got exposed to Tony Robbins, I remember coming back from Tony Robbins event. And of course, my mind was blown and I'm planning things out and everything. And I, I specifically remember, and this was coming to my mind as you we were talking here, is that I remember seeing videotapes. So we had the the actual tapes for the VCR. Yeah. And I remember yeah. putting, putting this in and 
watching and they were showing some people that to me clearly they were very successful i think even wayne dyer may have been in some of these videos but they had some of the programs that that tony robbins was selling and they had these people that were really very wealthy doing a teleconference and i was like wow so they're doing this teleconference and i was like this is way beyond what i could ever do i don't have the money to do that and fast forward here almost 20 years and you know, we're here, you're there in Canada, I'm here in, you know, in Texas, in the US, we're making a recording, we're having a teleconference and, you know, over this period of time. And so it just goes to show really that, you know, from one to the other. So uh, there's definitely a lot of things that change and, you know, we do have to figure out how to use this technology. It can help out quite a bit. Exactly, exactly. I keep telling this for every business, like if even they have, um, a local shop that people are so much interested in figuring out why should I buy from this business? So make it, make it personal, have a personal touch, show them exactly what you're doing every day. People like, get, Oh, look at them, how they pick their food, how they pick their goods, uh, how they wash the cars, how they do this, how they do that. So then with that kind of personal touch, because the, the high tech is always there. The issue is that people, believe that we need to follow the same way of all oh, big corporates are doing everything. Actually not. People are so much embraced that the idea, oh, I need to make the perfect ad. There is nothing perfect. Actually, all those big companies, they spend a lot of money on just ads and they wait for testing and they hope that the agency that they told them the idea about the ad, it will relate and, and get people um, to buy the products. Now it become much cheaper even to make a decent video. Uh, if you have a good light, a good mic, a good story to tell, then you'd be able to record the video. Now you need sometimes to learn how to tell the good story because some people, they don't understand how to tell the good story. And it's all about the customer or the prospect that you want them to become a customer, not about you. So yeah, part of it, it's about you, but don't be the hero all the time because they will get bored. It's about them. What's in it for them? W-I-I-F-M. Very good. Very good. Well, Sammy, thank you so much, you know, for your time and the insight. This was a, a lot of great value, I think, for everybody that's had the opportunity to listen to this and that, that will in the future. So for those that, that are listening to this going forward and they want to follow you more closely or they they want to do business with you they want to get other re they want to connect what are the best ways for people to connect you know with you and follow what you're doing so they can connect uh if they want to um, uh, reach to me they can go to linkedin and just type my name i will be there they can also come to uh, my website ewebmarketingpro.com so e W E B as web and marketing M A R K E T I N G pro P R O dot com. That's also that um, a way to connect uh, with me. And uh, also, if we are if we are on the Magnetic Entrepreneur Inc page, they can come there and uh, send me uh, through that page. So I'm uh, I'm, I'm everywhere, and uh, I will be happy to answer any question for them or find a way to help them uh, in their business or to share with them how they can take their idea to the next level. That's great. Well, all right. Well, great. Thank you so much, Sammy. Uh, what we can do, I guess we're sort of ended with the podcast since we were sharing here into the, into the community. Let's just check and see if there were any questions or any comments yeah. or anything. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Technology, it's <laughs> all right. Well, let's see here. Okay, yes. All right, so it is up right now. So let's just take a look and see. So if anybody that is still uh, watching here, if you have any questions, take a look here. Let's see. Okay. All right. Well, nothing that's posted there right now. So I think we've. Uh, yeah, we've been on for an hour and 14 minutes. So, all right. Very good, Sammy. So, well, thank you so much. We'll, uh, we'll kind of end it out here and have a good rest of the rest of the day, rest of the night.
You're welcome. It was my pleasure to be here with you as well. Definitely. All right. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, we'll pull out of.